a gracious good day once again. Tis I, Norton the First, by grace of God, Emperor of the United States and Protector of Mexico, back at you with episode 37 of Emperor Norton's fantastic history vlog. Today is May 6, 2020, also known as Seis de Mayo, National Hangover Day. One of two we celebrate in this country, the other one being the 18th of March. You can fill in the blanks on that one. Well, today's big story, and this is taken once again from John Ralston's wonderful book, This Day in San Francisco. If you've never read this book, it's a wonderful compendium broken down the day-to-day -day as to the history of the city. We thank John Ralston for his contribution to our daily vlog. Couldn't do it without him. It was on this date in 1947 that San Francisco reads that will vote on keeping the cable cars. Let's read from the book here. After Herb Cain leaked the news that Major Roger Lamphan's administration was planning to eliminate cable cars and replace them with buses, a storm broke over the mayor's head. On March 4, 27 women's civic groups led by Fidel Klusman formed the Citizens Committee to save the cable cars and began lobbying to have the Board of Supervisors place in the November ballot a charter amendment that would compel the Public Utilities Commission to retain all operating Powell Street cable car lines, a California street line which was privately owned at that time. Lamphim derided the preservation of the 74-year-old cable car system as pure sentimentality, but the Citizens Committee produced compelling economic arguments for keeping cable cars. On May 5th, after hearing from Mrs. Klusman and other speakers, the Board of Supervisors passed a proposal to place the amendment on the November ballot by a 7-4 vote. Uh, Mayor Lamphim was no fan of the cable cars. Uh, he uh, rode down Marcus Street on a horse-drawn car, asked how could the, and Friedel Klusman asked in response, how can you fall in love with a bus? Well, Luckily, the measure passed on November 4, 1947, Measure 10, by 166,989 votes to 51,457 votes. Fidel Klusman issued a victory statement, quote, It is wonderful to know that San Franciscans appreciate their famous, efficient, and safe cable cars. Uh, they are now also protected by their designation as a National Historic Landmark. It is said that they are the only moving National Historic Landmark, but that's not really true. Uh, the Constitution in Boston Harbor is moved once a year, and of course the recent designation of a streetcar named Desire in New Orleans also makes that a moving National Historic Landmark. Hopefully the cable cars will be back and running very soon. Well, let's get on with the rest of today. Uh, 1682, Louis XIV of France moves his court to his palace at Versailles. This is, of course, our imperial, imperial palace. And we're vlogging today from the lovely Imperial Gardens. 19, 1837, U.S. blacksmith John Deere creates the first steel plow in Grand Detour, Illinois. 1951, Linus Yale patents the Yale Lock. 1851 is the beginning of the San Francisco Chamber of Commerce. 1860, the San Francisco Olympic Club, first U.S. athletic club forms. 1864, Union, General, General, Union Army General William Tecumseh Sherman begins his advance to Atlanta, Georgia during the Atlanta campaign of the U.S. Civil War. Now, we do have a connection with uh, Mr. Sherman. He was the president of the bank of Lucas Turner and Company, located at the corners of Montgomery and Jackson Streets, and he uh, supervised the liquidation of our assets, but we will forgive him for that. He was just doing his job after all. 1882, uh, something that definitely uh, lodges in the imperial craw, the Chinese Exclusion Act was passed by Congress. It was repealed in 1943. 1889, the World's Fair opens in Paris with a completed Eiffel Tower serving as the entrance arch. 
1937, the German airship Hindenburg explodes uh, in flames at Lakehurst, New Jersey, killing 35 of the 97 on board and one on the ground. Oh, the humanity. 1940, the Pulitzer Prize is awarded to John, Stein, John Steinbeck for the Grapes of Wrath. 1941, at California's March Field, Bob Hope performs his first USO show. He would do that for decades afterwards. 1954, Roger Bannister of the UK becomes the first person to run a four-minute mile, recording at three minutes, 59.4 seconds. Current world record is three minutes, 43.13 seconds. 1957, the last broadcast of I Love Lucy on CBS TV. Also that year, 1957, the Pulitzer Prize is awarded to John F. Kennedy for his book, Profiles in Courage. 1994, the channel linking England and France underneath the English Channel is officially open. 1994, comedian Bobcat Goldthwait sets fire to the couch on The Tonight Show. And in 2002, entrepreneur Elon Musk founded SpaceX. Well, let's get to our birthdays today. 1856, the father of psychology, Sigmund Freud. I've been meaning to talk to him about a dream I've been having. 1870, A.P. Giannini, a founder of the Bank of Italy, which would go on to become the Bank of America, right here in San Francisco. 1895, Rudolf Valentino, if you've never been to his grave, it is in the Hollywood Forever Cemetery in Southern California. Well worth a visit. Speaking of film, 1902, film director Mac, Max Ophuls is born. You may remember him from his film about our beloved countess, Lola Montez. 1915, filmmaker Orson Welles, is born. Also 1915, journalist Theodore H. White. 1931, Willie Mays, the Say Hey Kid, one famous San Francisco giant. 1945, musician Bob Seger. 1961, actor George Clooney. Deaths on this day include Henry David Thoreau, American writer and pacifist, dies at 44. 1992, Marlena Dietrich. And we just reserved, res received word today of two deaths, both musicians. Millie Small, who recorded the song and had a hit with My Boy Lollipop, and also Florian Schneider, the founder of the influential group Kraftwerk. Well, that wraps it up for today. Until we see you again, stay safe, stay inside. If you go outside, wear a mask. Don't be an idiot. Be kind to each other, as I call it. Lots of people idiots, but you know what I mean. And until we see you again, a gracious.